Jesus, we just thank you for our sister Serena. Lord, we thank you for her faithfulness. We thank you that she loves you so much. And we just do pray, Lord, that you would use her today to speak to us. Lord, we just pray that you would just anoint these words that all of us may be touched, that all of us may be changed by you. And Lord, we even pray for those who listen to this message on a video, that they also may be greatly blessed, because we ask these things in and through the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Well, we're going to uh, look at Joshua chapter 15, if you want to turn to it. If not, I'm just going to read a few verses in a moment. Um, it's a passage, it's a lovely passage, it really speaks to me. And you know sometimes the scripture speaks to you and you can't really explain it or know what it does or why it's doing it, but it just means something to you. This is Joshua chapter 15. We're going to read verses 16 to 19. Just a few verses. You'll all know it when, uh, when you turn to it. Joshua 15, verse 16 to 19. And it's, the sermon is called, Give me springs of water. Give me springs of water. So I'm sure you'll know uh, what story it comes from. So just before we start, here in the account of uh, Israel's history... Joshua has led the people of Israel out of the wilderness, across Jordan, into the promised land, and he's divided up the land between the 12 tribes of Israel. And there's a man called Caleb, I'm sure we'd all heard of, and he's a mighty warrior. And he's been given land and cities, and he's driven out the previous inhabitants. And, and has taken um, ownership of those lands and cities. And then he promises to give his daughter in marriage to the man who can take the city of Kirjath Sefer. All right? So he says anyone that can overcome this city, drive out the inhabitants, they can marry my daughter. So we'll read Joshua 15, verses 16 to 17. And Caleb said... He who attacks Kirjath Sefer and takes it, to him I will give Achsar, my daughter, as a wife. So Othniel, the son of Kenaz, the brother of Caleb, took it, and he gave him Achsar, his daughter, as a wife. Now it was so, when she came to him, that she persuaded him, he's talking about her husband, Othniel now, to ask her father for a field. So she dismounted from her donkey, and Caleb said to her, What do you want? She answered, Give me a blessing. Since you have given me a dry land in the south, give me also springs of water. So he gave her the upper and the lower springs. Isn't that wonderful? I love that passage. So we hear that a man called Othniel, who's actually Caleb's nephew, fights for this city and takes it and obtains Caleb's daughter uh, as his wife. Now, Caleb has obviously given his daughter a present of land, perhaps for her dowry, her wedding present, but she's not satisfied with it. And the land he's given her is a land in the south, which appears to have been a very dry land, perhaps a desert, we don't know, with no water supply. So as she's going off to marry Othniel, she goes to her father first to ask for another field or another piece of land, a more fertile piece of land, perhaps with springs of water in it. And Caleb responds to her request and gives her land with both upper and lower springs in it. Lovely story, isn't it? What can we learn from this story? to help us in our relationship with God or in our walk with him. Well, the main point of the story, if we get rid of all the other bits, is that a daughter goes to her father and asks for a gift, and, and he gives it. Um, anyone who's a father or a daughter, I'm sure can identify with that. I'll go and ask Daddy. 
he'll, he'll rescue me, he'll help me, daddy will sort it out. And uh, is daddy going to say no to his daughter when she asks for something like that? Of course not. Um, who would? You know, he'll probably give an abundance. That's what a father would do, isn't it? If they're able anyway, out of his wealth, whatever he's got, he's going to try and bless his daughter. You know, I might have told you this story before, but when I was little, my dad used to take my sister and I out uh, somewhere on a Sunday morning so that mum could probably get have a bit of time on her own, get Sunday lunch ready with us without us running round. And she would always say to him, don't buy them an ice cream or they won't eat their lunch when they come back. Do you think he did? Of course he bought us an ice cream. Of course he did. What dad is going to say? Oh, don't worry about that. I'll buy, you, I'll buy you an ice cream. He'd say, Dad, can we have one? Yeah, all right then. Don't tell your mother. He'd always say that. Don't tell your mother that I bought you an ice cream. I think he quite enjoyed it, really. He couldn't resist his daughter's request, could he? It was some, for, you know, a time for him to spend some time with us. He was working all week. And it's the same here, isn't it? Caleb, I'm sure, felt, I can't give in to my daughter. I've given her some land. She wants something else. Of course I'll give it to her. There was another time when I wanted to, when I was grown up and I'd been through my college and uh, my degree and I'd worked for a little while. I thought, oh, this isn't satisfying me doing sort of accounts in an office. So I thought, I'll go and train to be a teacher uh, in Cambridge. I was up in Norwich at the time. And my mum came and said, your dad really wants to pay for you to do this training. He'd love to do that. I said, oh, I was a bit naive at the time, so what it was all going to cost. I said, well, I think I'd like to try and pay for it myself, actually. Do you know what? Dad was gutted, apparently. Terribly disappointed that he wasn't going to be able to, to support me in a way that he would love to have done. Um, he wanted to give me something, and I was kind of refusing his help, really. So anyway, after some thought, I went back to Mum and I said, actually, I'd love Dad to help me. I, think, I don't think I can do it on my own. I think I'm going to need his help. So that was, that was wonderful. He, he helped me through my training. Couldn't resist his daughter's request. Just wanted to give, as any father does. Same here with Caleb. Couldn't resist his daughter's request. Do you know, in this story about Caleb and his daughter, we can see a picture of how we can go to God and ask for a blessing and he will grant our request. In Matthew 7, I'm just going to read a few verses, Jesus says, Which of you, if your son asks for bread, will give him a stone? Or if he asks for a fish, will he give him a snake? If you then, though you are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father in heaven give good gifts to those who asked him? So what are we talking about here? We're talking about prayer, aren't we? Now, when, when John asked me to preach, he said, we're really, you know, considering prayer at the moment. So if you could preach on prayer, that would be great. And I said, well, maybe I'll, I'll ask Jesus. I'll see what Jesus wants to say. And then I kind of forgot about it. And this is the, this is the scripture and the message he gave me. So it fits in, doesn't it? We're talking about prayer. Believing that if we ask God for something, he'll give it to us. Having that sort of faith that, uh, Caleb's daughter did. Why would he give it? Well, we know, because a father loves to give to his children. Caleb's daughter had no hesitation. Before she even goes off to marry, what does she do first? She goes and meets her father. She goes and sees dad. And um, he's the one who has the power and the ability to resolve the problem. He's the one who has all the land. He has the wealth and he can give it to whoever he wants. And of course, he chooses, it to, chooses to give it to his daughter. Why does she ask? Is she just being greedy? Is she wanting more than, you know, than was given to her? A bit like Oliver in the story. I want some more, please. Oh, that's not God, is it? He doesn't say that. He doesn't treat her, uh, you know, behave like that. Um, you know, the head of the orphanage does to Oliver. More? We don't see that at all. Why does she ask? Well, she's found a problem, hasn't she? She's got a problem. She's found a lack. 
that's going to affect her future. Possibly her life, definitely her well-being. She's been given a dry land where nothing will grow. How is that going to help her in the future? Is anything going to be, is she be able, going to be able to grow crops and support her husband and her family? Is that going to work? Not in a dry land it's not going to, is it? She's very wise in what she does, in the fact that she goes, before the marriage even starts, she goes to her father. And isn't it a good idea, before we take on any venture, any relationship, any job, any activity, what do we do? We go to our father and we make sure we've got what we need in order to accomplish that job, that task, that relationship. We need to hear from our father first. So we hear in the story, she jumps down off her donkey, which is apparently a sign of respect, and she asks her father for help. And sometimes we ask, need to ask God for help uh, for ourselves, for other people. Sometimes life, in general, is a bit like a very dry land. Has anyone ever been through a, a period of time like that? Life is like a dry land. It's hot, it's barren, nothing's working, you're not getting anything out of it, nothing will grow, nothing's coming forth from it. Sometimes life is hard. And we have to sometimes swallow our pride and say, what do I do about this, Lord? I had to swallow my pride in thinking, oh no, I can, I can, I can cope with the training in Cambridge, I can pay for all that. No, I couldn't. I needed help from my father, and he was, he was willing to give. What does Caleb's daughter ask for? Is she asking for money? Is she asking for riches and possessions? If you think about it, she's asking for life, isn't she? She asks for water that will bring life, that will sustain them both in their future, in their marriage. Water that will secure her future. Um, for well-being and prosperity and that's what God wants to give to us he wants to give us a blessed life with spiritual water that comes forth he doesn't criticize her or accuse her for being greedy or you know asking for something else he gives her even more than she's asked for she asks for springs he gives her upper and lower springs he gives her double doesn't he he willingly gives her an abundance. And that is how we have to see God. He is someone who is willing, when we feel like things are getting hard, things are rather dry, there's no life coming forth from whatever we're doing, we can go to him and he will bless us with springs of water in whatever our activity is. And she's blessed because she asks, isn't she? See, if she could have gone off in this marriage thinking, well, Dad's already given me a land, I better not ask for anything else. We'll manage somehow, you know. We'll have to, you know, scrimp and save. It'll be a bit hard, but we'll manage. She doesn't do that at all. She's blessed because she asks. In Luke eleven thirteen, Jesus says, How much more will your Father in heaven give the Holy Spirit to those that ask? So if we feel that our spiritual life is a bit dry, then we can ask God for an infilling of the Holy Spirit, an outpouring of the Holy Spirit. You know, I was talking to Jane just before a church service the other week, and we'd done a little bit of singing, as we do before the service, and she was talking about praying, and I said, yeah, praying is hard sometimes, isn't it? Sometimes it, it feels like chewing carpet. And she laughed, you know, she said, yeah, that's exactly what it feels like, chewing an old bit of cardboard or a bit of carpet, you know. There's no goodness in it, there's no juice in it, there's no nourishment in it. But the truth is that we can ask God and he will give us springs of water. Perhaps in our prayer life, if our prayer life's a bit dry and hard going, um, perhaps that's what we ought to do. Nikki said once, you know, she has her times of prayer in India. She's up on the top of the roof, on the roof, you know, praying uh, early in the morning. And she says when prayer gets a little bit tough, she'll stop praying and she'll have a time of praise and worship and then she'll go back to praying again. 
And that's sort of summoning up the spirit, letting the water overflow, isn't it? So that we can go back to prayer with renewed vigour. If your life feels spiritually dry, perhaps there's not much interest or enthusiasm for God even, and you would like there to be, then we can pray. We can ask for springs of living water. Perhaps things aren't working out for us very well. Things have gone wrong. You're struggling along, not hearing much from God, maybe. Maybe he seems a long, a distance away. Maybe you have a bit of a shallow or distant relationship with God. You're not as close as you like to be. Perhaps there's not much fruit from your Christian life. You're still struggling with habits and perhaps even sins of the past. What can we do? We can, all, we can go to God and say, Give me also springs of water. The Holy Spirit wants to give us living water, springs of water. God is waiting to hear us cry out to him with our needs and our requests, and he will respond. If a mere man like Caleb can have the compassion to give to his daughter something that's going to bless her future and her current life, then how much more would God give to us? much much more. Caleb's daughter has absolute confidence in her father. Obviously she knows him, she's grown up with him. She knows if she goes to him and asks he's going to give her. That's why she bothers going. We need to go to God. She sees a potential problem on the horizon and goes straight to her father for help before the situation arises. Before she's tried I don't know, sowing seed in a dry land. She goes before. And I like one tiny word she uses in this sentence when asking for help. She says, give me also springs of water. She's kind of saying, look, you've already blessed me with the land. I know that, but I need something else. I want also springs of water to go along with this land. She acknowledges what he's already given her. But she still asks for more. We can do that. We can be thankful to God. Thank you for everything you've given me, Lord. But I need this to help me. I need more. And it's okay. God is not going to refuse. We can see it as if God has given us salvation. Well, what a wonderful thing salvation is. He's given us Christ. Perhaps we shouldn't ask for anything else. Perhaps we should just kind of ooh, struggle along now. Get on with it ourselves. Now God has given it to us. But that's not God's. Salvation is a blessed land, but at times it's a bit of a dry land. It's hard work. And we can ask God for the flowing of the Holy Spirit. She had a relationship with him. She can have confidence. And isn't it interesting? It's not the husband that goes to, uh, to Caleb. It's his daughter. She even says to her, to her husband, uh, can you go and ask father for water and we don't know if he just gave her permission or if he sort of said oh we'll manage and she goes anyway because she knows her father she has a right to ask him she has a close relationship to ask him just like we do we are children of God we have a right and a relationship to ask God for what we need to say I need more than what I've got at the moment Hebrews 4, 16, I'm going to read this from the Amplified, uh, and it says, Let us therefore, with privilege, approach the throne of grace, that is, the throne of God's gracious favour, with confidence and without fear, so that we may receive mercy for our failures and find his amazing grace to help in times of need. An appropriate blessing coming just at the right moment. For Caleb's daughter, it came just at the right moment. Just about to go off and get married. And he gives her what she needs, the springs of water. It's the same. Hebrews encourages us to come before the throne of grace, into his presence, and boldly make our requests to God. Like loving and loved children coming to their father. So, when we're in need and thinking about prayer, let's remember Caleb's daughter, let's remember her attitude, let's remember what she asked for, and let's remember Caleb, um, 
her father who gave willingly. We can go with boldness and confidence and um, we can be like loving children who can confidently go to our Heavenly Father and God will meet our need. He gives living water freely because we're his children. He bought us with a great price. That is Christ. What greater price could there be? There's nothing else that he can refuse. If he's given us Christ, he can give us everything. And the scripture says he's blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. So we can go and ask. Amen? Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah.